Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and the news keeps hitting. Now, obviously, we have not been reporting frequently, as frequently as other channels might be, but we've been doing our best, and it just so happened that today for our table talk uh, came just after the news that Paizo is going to be releasing its own gaming license, or at least is participating in. But there's a lot to talk about, and this video contains a lot. So let's start from the beginning, shall we? So the OGL or information about the OGL that Wizards of the Coast has been posting was supposed to come out yesterday. Well, it's like the 6th and then they're going to do something yesterday and then they're going to do something today and they've just x it all. Nothing. We've heard nothing official from Wizards of the Coast and that's probably because they got nothing they can say that can really make things better. Now, if Wizards of the Coast was truly innocent in all this, we would see that, no, hey, here's actually the OGL. They provide it for us, and they'd say, oh, you guys are just making a big, oh, hubbubaloo over nothing. That hasn't happened. That's because what leaks there were were probably accurate. But, you know, of course, we have no official information from Wizards of the Coast, but no one believes them at this point that that wasn't going to be the case, and they're paying the price for it. And speaking about prices... D&D Beyond has been seeing a little bit of a scuffle, especially after an email was leaked, which I'll go ahead and read here. Hi, I'm an employee at Wizards of the Coast currently working on D&D Beyond and with the D&D business leads on the health of the product line. If you want, I can provide proof of this. I'm sending this message because I fear for the health of a community I love and I know what the leaders at WotC are looking at. They are briefly delaying rollout of the OGL changes due to the backlash. Their decision making is based entirely on the provable or probable impact to their bottom line. Specifically, they are looking at D&D Beyond subscriptions and cancellations as it is the quickest financial data they currently have. They are still hoping the community forgets, moves on, and they can still push this through. I decided to reach out because of my time in WotC. I've never once heard management refer to customers in a positive manner. Their communication gives me the impression they see customers as an obstacle between them and their money. The D&D Beyond team was first told to prepare to support the new OGL changes and online portal when they go, got back from the holidays, and leadership doesn't take any responsibility for the pain and stress they cause others. Leadership's First communication to the rank and file of the OGL was 30 minutes on the 11th, which was yesterday. This was the first time they even tried to communicate their intentions about the OGL to employees, and even in this meeting, they blamed the community for overreacting. I'll repeat, the main thing the leadership is looking at is D&D Beyond subscription cancellations. Hope your day goes well. So, this email came out, this, this leaked email came out, and for the most part, it's one of those things, and I, I'll post the links to where everything was found down below in the description so you don't have to worry about that. But it seems that, well, big companies are doing what big companies do, focusing purely on what they can make and not really doing anything to actually earn that money. And with this whole OGL business, they're now looking at their current subscription model, say, thinking, hmm, that's a place we can squeeze some money out. And so, because this came out, a lot of people have been canceling their D&D Beyond accounts. But there was a moment where the site went down and then came back up with some hot changes where people were finding that the cancel subscription button wasn't where it was before. Instead, it needed to go through a series of hoops to eventually find a off-site link that will take them to cancel their account. Meaning that while they can't legally stop you from leaving D&D Beyond, they can make it sure as hell more difficult to do so. And they're hoping that you'll just give up and you'll just keep your subscription because it's not that much and they can keep going forward with everything that's been going on. And they're also, as this email has indicated as well, showing that they are just hoping that everyone forgets the OGL business, will probably batten down the hatches for a little bit, wait a month, and then try to push it out then secretly without hopefully anyone giving it away. 
Now, obviously, this news comes at a great risk to the employees who are leaking it. And so we have some real heroes on our hands, some people who are out there fighting on the front lines for all of our sakes. And we should do the best we can to honor these heroes and to show Wizards of the Coast that we mean business. So if you have a D&D Beyond account and you're not needing it, I would recommend canceling it. And I know not everyone is going to do so and people are going to play the game they want to play. That's understandable. And I highly respect that too. But for those who wish to fight, fight in the way you know that you know will hurt them the most, which is in the wallet. So... On the eve of all this information, Paizo decided to strike while the iron is hot and make their own announcement that they are op uh, in collaboration with a variety of other corporations, more specifically, if I can find the link. All right, here's a list that we have so far. It's going to be Legendary Games. It's going to be Paizo, of course. It's going to be Cobalt Press. It's going to be Rogue's Genius Games. It's going to be... Green Ronin Publishing, and it's going to be Roll for Combat, and a, a bunch of others that are currently in the process of making a new open gaming license. This is called the Open RPG Creative License, which will allow, or the Orc, as uh, the title would indicate, that is going to be based purely on a system agnostic open gaming license that allows companies to share you know good game design and to allow people to publish it without fear of being reprimanded this is a lot of things a lot of companies are signing up for so that people who make third-party content using their ips as long as they don't use copyrighted materials can do so without fear of a large corporation like hasbro coming in for their wallet and this is great this is an amazing uh, there there is even a Gizmodo article that was done about Paizo's announcement. Paizo being the largest of the corporations uh, that is going to be working on this new open RPG creative license or the Orc. And this is just a direct response to Wizards updated open gaming license, which they are calling the OGL2 rather than the 1.1, which doesn't really change a whole lot. But, you know, at least maybe they're adding some revisions that might make it less horrible. But in the meantime, we're just going to have a much better open RPG license anyway. So, you know. With that, the Gizmodo article more or less states that this is just a direct response to what's happening with Wizards. And even the creator of the original OGL back in 2000, uh, Ryan Dancy, I believe his name is, uh, was stating it even has a petition up open for preventing the changes to the OGL 1.0.A. And as well... Uh, they made a statement that this will provide a safe harbor against any company being bought, sold, or changing management in the future and attempting to rescind rights or nullify sections of the license. The company hopes to pursue the establishment of a nonprofit like the Linux Foundation to hold the final edition of the ORC license. And this means that this license will not be owned by Paizo. They will not be owned by anyone. This, this particular license will only be owned by a company that does not benefit from RPG sales, as that is the right and just thing to do. And this is the haymaker that Paizo is coming out with to really sock to Wizards and to really show that tabletop gaming is not a monolith. It was never meant to be. It became it because, you know... D&D had such a long history and honestly D&D was the most successful tabletop game and still is to this day but other games are now much stronger in the industry and Paizo has even said that they are willing to go to court if Wizards of the Coast tries to oppose this so all in all lots of good news and we're definitely hitting as we as we said in the last stream up to today or yesterday, I guess, when this video comes out, but the one last week when the OGL news first started coming out, it's a whale fall. Wizard of the Coast, this big bloated beast, has finally starting to succumb to the illness that is greed, and because of that, a bunch of people are now flushing out 
into the industry to look for other games and other homes and third-party content creators as well. And there's many, many games. I recommend Lancer. Massive Press Lancer is a really good RPG game as we have videos of it here on the channel. There's also Morkborg if you want something a little bit more zany and fun. And uh, too many to even count. But this channel here, here at Battle of Gamer, we are going to be doing content on multiple tabletop RPGs as well as Pathfinder 2e because I know a lot of people are heading over there and it is still my favorite tabletop RPG. So we'll still be coming out with archetypes and I also have plans coming out for the Treasure Vault book that is coming out next month, I do believe. Plus Rage of, a Rage of Elements where a new class is coming out this summer. So if you want to see all of that, I recommend you subscribe. But if you just like this news in general and you want more people to see this wonderful news that Pizos have come out, please leave at least a like. This information needs to be seen by as many people as possible and needs to come from as many sources as possible to help further validate what's coming up. And we're going to be doing our best here to report as things come out, though I am not very interested in over-reporting. So you're not going to see me making five, ten videos on each of these new steps that's coming out. We're just going to report things as they come out when there's enough information to really go into it. Other than that, we're going to be keeping up our normal RPG schedule for what is in the games that we're currently looking at. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.